The Soft Bigotry of Low Expectations That's the set of glasses through which the world is looking at Gaza right now. And what worries me is that the basic assumptions of Islam are migrating into our own basic assumptions, which are really not the same assumptions at all, at least for the time being. How long it's going to stay like that? Well, that's up to us. I'm going to be pointing out some basic differences in basic assumptions, and I'm Granny Opteryx. OK, so yesterday I made an emotional video and now you'll know how I speak when I haven't prepared any notes, uh, made any bullet points and haven't edited a video. So I was searching for words and normally I'd edit out very long gaps and there were many in that video, but uh, I just didn't have the heart to do that. However, I want to make something very clear. Oh, gosh. That's what politicians say just about the time they're about to say, to obfuscate like mad, isn't it? Anyway, I am being very clear now. I was crying about those poor kids and their suffering parents, but it wasn't only for them. It was for us as well, because as I touched upon in, in that video, Islam in its current state is affecting us all and will affect us more if we let it. I'll explain what I mean. You see, I was reminded of that when I was listening to a recording of a talk radio phone in. And there was a caller who was, he was being very critical of Islam. I can't remember who the interviewer was, but he wasn't pushing back on that. And I'm interrupting myself here to remind you to click like, to subscribe and to share. And if you're on YouTube, remember to click the notification bell. All the links to my other channels are in the description, including links to donation sites. I'm always grateful for donations, of course, but just clicking like is the best thing you can do for this video and my channel generally. And I'm reminding you that the Christmas 2023 competition is now open. The link to the video telling you all about it is also in the description. The caller referred at one point to the Prophet Muhammad. And I thought that needs some talking about. So let's just pick that apart, should we? If you heard someone on talk radio referring to our saviour Jesus, I think you'd form an opinion that about that person right away, wouldn't you? And the opinion, well, my opinion will probably be that this person is a bit of a holy roller, perhaps even somewhat odd, because it isn't considered the thing to talk about our saviour Jesus in ordinary conversation. And we'd certainly consider it even odder if a Muslim referred to our saviour Jesus or our Lord Jesus, wouldn't we? Well, we wouldn't expect any Muslim to talk like that, would we? That would be our basic assumption. And yet, although Muhammad is a prophet only to Muslims, he is consistently referred to, even by that uh, anti-Muslim there on that talk radio thing, and especially in the media, all the time in the media, as the prophet Muhammad, as if that were just a given, a basic assumption. So let's talk about basic assumptions, should we? There are some assumptions we make about the world which we don't even think about. I mean, how many of us think about oxygen, which is a sour, the German word for it is Sauerstoff, isn't it? Uh, it's, a, it's a corrosive, vicious chemical that can reduce an iron bar to dust in a couple of weeks. And we don't think about that, do we? We just breathe it in and, well, we don't breathe it out. We use it. We breathe out the, the, the waste products of it. We don't think about it. We don't think about oxygen. And when we walk out onto the street, we assume that the trees will be growing from the ground upwards, for instance. And we assume if we hand our money to a shop assistant to buy an item, we'll get that item handed over to us. 
We also have assumptions about how people act in the streets. In most parts of the Western world, we assume that passers-by will not attack us, for instance, for no reason. If we didn't have these basic assumptions, our society wouldn't work at all. However, there are different cultures with different basic assumptions. For instance, in the Muslim world, it's taken for granted that a woman wearing a short skirt is fair game. At the very least, fair game for harassment, if not for a lot worse. And so, when we get more Muslims with this basic assumption, and if we're being too lazy or too self-destructively altruistic and tolerant to punish them for bad behaviour, we have to allow our assumptions, we, we have to lose our basic assumptions and allow our basic assumptions to shift towards them without even thinking about it. In um, like villages and towns near areas where there are large um, uh, deposits of illegal migrants housed in military garrisons or local country hotels, that sort of thing, the local girls are already modifying their habits of life. They've accepted that they can't walk home alone from a party, that they can't go out to night classes without making arrangements for pickups. Now, that didn't used to be the basic assumption, did it? But it is now. And then there's the other thing, you know, any religious cultural event. I remember there was, uh, this was in Germany, the um, New Year, the usual New Year thing. Well, there were a bunch of Muslims outside the cathedrals there, uh, you know, interrupting the service by shouting and shooting off uh, fireworks. And now you get any Christmas market anywhere here in Britain, and it's a regular thing that the police are warning about suspicious activity or remember to report abandoned packages, and there are always extra police around the perimeter looking for somebody trying a, um, you know, a, a car ramming or something like that. It's just taken for granted now. It's become a basic assumption. If there's any sort of traditional activity, well, Christmas tree lighting, people in New York will know about that, or an Easter parade. Well, there's at least an even chance that it could be interrupted in some very nasty ways by some adherent of a non-indigenous religion and with an axe to grind. Now, that wasn't so much of a good metaphor, was it? I shall proceed. Back to that basic assumption on talk radio. Muhammad is a prophet of a foreign religious faith with which many of us don't want that much to do. That guy I was talking about actually said the Prophet Muhammad in such a natural way that it seemed to be his basic assumption, even though I don't know anyone who'd refer in that sort of conversation to our saviour Jesus. Or maybe if there was a very obscure prophet, um, Ezekiel, for instance. So somebody might have to mention that they were referring to that particular Ezekiel. And so there might be a sort of preceding description to remind everyone he was a prophet. And most likely it would be something along along the along the lines of the biblical prophet Ezekiel you see putting it in that particular book that is we put him into a context but we wouldn't be giving him a title not like the prophet Muhammad now if you want to say the Muslim prophet Muhammad you know, that's something else. But that wasn't what that man said, as critical as he was about Islam. So back to my previous video. Of course, I was shedding tears for the enormity of that terrible day, October the 7th. But there was something else. I have two granddaughters and two grandsons, and I do worry about their future, especially the granddaughters, of course. And I was crying as much for what's happening to Western civilization as what happened in Israel, because the horrors that occurred there, well, you know, 
I think we could regard that as a sort of taster for what could happen here, given half a chance. The Pakistani gangs that brutalised, and by the way, still are brutalising English working class girls, could rise again as a more irresistible force with enough numbers and enough weakness from the British establishment, because Pakistani culture has a different set of basic assumptions from ours. And they're so basic that we don't even question them. We just assume that at heart everyone has the same basic assumptions. And we don't. And the, the funny thing is, without even thinking about it, we acknowledge that. How many times recently have I heard interviewers asking representatives of Israel, oh, you say you want to obliterate Hamas, but if you create such devastation and destruction and death in Gaza, aren't you in danger of making more of the citizens into terrorists? Did anyone ask that about the British bombing of Germany during the Second World War? Now, however bad it was, we didn't expect the Germans to become terrorists. We expected them to accept defeat and get on with things. And that's what they did because that was their basic assumption as well. Meanwhile, what do we expect from the defeated Gazans? We expect resentment. We expect terrorism. We don't expect them to be out there in bucket chains clearing up the rubble. Look, I just remembered, you know, those photographs. Uh, I'll find one. I'll put it up there. Photographs of German women after the war, all in bucket chains, uh, you know, with passing buckets along to clear up the mess of their previous dwellings. Now, dozens of pictures, it shouldn't be too difficult to find one. Would we expect the Arab women in Gaza to be doing that? I mean, think to yourself, do you expect after the, the I mean, a lot of Gaza is now rubble. Do you expect the Arabs to be out there uh, with, uh, with buckets, especially the women, clearing it up? No, what we expect is for them to be sitting down in the rubble, holding their babies and wailing and then waiting for the UN to do something about it. That's our expectation of them. And it's the soft bigotry. Hang on. Of Yeah, the soft bigotry of low expectations. Basic assumptions, you see. Right. That's it. Till next time. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Grambo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.